hate is still making a home here in the Northwest. There are more hate groups now than ever before, and we want to know why. Members of the Aryan Nations and those determined to stop the hate talked exclusively with Como for Sabre Gurch. A warning, some of the information in this story is disturbing. He stamped his skin with the symbols of the Aryan Nations. We alone are his children. He named his baby daughter Berlin. That Adolf Hitler was a great man. He hears the battle cry of a brotherhood in a race war. Now we have a slave reigning over us. And when Gerald O'Brien looks at this headstone in a Coeur d'Alene cemetery... I promised Pastor Butler and my father who are in heaven that I would not let this die and I won't lose my faith. A faith spewed by Richard Butler, for 30 years the guiding force of the Church of Jesus Christ Christian Aryan Nations. You can't have a nation of all kinds of uh, uh, things. You can't mix uh, orangutans in and say this is part of your nation, even though they've, they've been taught to, uh, to talk now. When Butler died in 2004, the people of Coeur d'Alene buried Idaho's decades-long history with the Aryan Nations, a group the government once targeted as a terrorist threat, headquartered on 20 acres, a compound where young extremists were recruited and trained. It's almost impossible to uh, find a gauge that would measure how evil this organization was. Norman Gissel was one leader of a civil rights movement that forced Richard Butler's neo-Nazis out of Coeur d'Alene. Hey, hey! Ho, oh, oh. ho! Nazi biggest Ho, oh, hey, hey! This is where Richard Butler's house stood. It came down about eight years ago with the rest of the 20-acre compound when the group lost a $6 million lawsuit, went bankrupt, and its members left town. Their swastikas bulldozed to the ground. That was one of the great days of, of my life. But one small seed of that white separatist movement is still rooted here, determined to grow. Right now, it's the time for us to gather. It really is. I mean, we, we need action. We need action now. The Southern Poverty Law Center tracks racial hatred. In the last eight years, the center reports the number of hate groups is up 50 percent. They count 962, the most ever on record. To say six months ago, I had four contacts a month. They wanted information and uh, membership applications. Now it's up to four or five a day. The center says there are three reasons. Exploitation of the illegal immigration issue, more recently the crumbling economy, and the historic election of Barack Obama. That means that uh, the white America is waking up. That's what it says to me. It says that uh, people are starting to uh, to get involved and really starting to understand the plight of our race. The sound of hatred echoed just weeks ago in the shots fired at the U.S. Memorial Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. A white supremacist accused of killing a black security guard. But more often, hatred sounds like this. There definitely has been an upturn. The anonymity of the Internet makes white pride websites like Stormfront magnets. The night of uh, President Obama's election, the Stormfront website was hit with so much activity that it crashed. The Anti-Defamation League tracks the hate chatter. The League says online talk fueled an assassination plot by two white supremacist skinheads who allegedly planned to kill blacks and President Obama last October. The ADL alerted the FBI. What is happening in the Northwest is um, little pockets of people, little lone wolves. The Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs reports 157 racially and ethnically motivated hate crimes in Washington last year. That's up 18 cases from 2007. The Pacific Northwest is still relatively quiet, but drive down I-5 from Bellingham to Medford and off any exit. And there would be people in those communities who uh, subscribe to these websites. Last August, drivers didn't have to leave I-5. This message glared at them from the highway in Marysville. Eradicating the hate can be a long road. You never, never uh, decrease the problem by ignoring it. No. Here's a guy who knows. I've been here several times when deer would cross through here. The animals returned after the hate well. It's a striking contrast to Butler's old compound, the beauty restored to this land where hate chose to settle. Tony Stewart and Norman Gissel helped clear the Aryan nations from this path, 
It was the fight of their lives. Every community should make it loud and clear that if you move to our community and you're going to engage in hate, it will be rejected. Still, this 30-year-old salutes a dead leader in a cemetery, determined to resurrect the Aryan Nation's Church of Jesus Christ Christian. No, it's not back. This Idaho town says that tie to history is severed. These two men who live in Coeur d'Alene are operating out of a post office box number. But Tony Stewart knows that hate can find a new address. The First Amendment guarantees protection even for hate speech. But good speech can always outweigh hate speech. Saber Gurge, Como 4 News. The Anti-Defamation League has many ideas about how to stop the hate. For more information, go to ComoNews.com. I'm not a crook.